All right, here we go. I've really been enjoying our emphasis on environmental justice over the last, uh, well, it started at the beginning of April. It feels like a real gift to do these things side by side, whether we're at the Baltimore Free Farm digging through weeds or cutting down trees. We're going to Target this week and remembering my reusable bags, which I hadn't done with Target before, and knowing there's other folks who are taking up that practice or other ones like it, like uh, turning off your air conditioning when you drive to Pennsylvania. Um, also, if anyone has more baking soda ideas, we should probably start putting them on the Facebook group. That's from last week. Baking soda, yeah. Um, let's pray. Let's pray. Gracious God, help us connect to each other and to you. And in doing that, find the living water that springs up to eternal life. Refresh us. Give us that water to drink that we might never be thirsty. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So in certain parts of the world, there are these tremendous sinkholes that go deep into the earth. They can be 20 or 30 feet across or more. Some of them are miles across. And every now and then a new one will open up, dropping the bottom out of whatever was sitting on the ground there before. At the bottom of many sinkholes, hundreds of feet down, they're full of water. So this is one that has water in it, a sinkhole in Oman, I think. Sometimes a hole will just open up unexpectedly, leaving an open space where before there had been solid ground. Yeah, this one's pretty dramatic. This was in Guatemala, in uh, Guatemala City. They're caused by the particular kind of bedrock that's underneath the surface. Since many places, most a lot of places have water under the ground, right? We have groundwater here too, uh, but we don't have sinkholes. And most of the time we all walk around and build houses and build businesses and roads on top of the ground and we're never thinking about the water that's flowing underneath of it. Uh, So we can look at the last one. All right, there's another one with water in it. So recently a team of divers in Florida went about 300 feet down into the dark of a sinkhole and with their flashlights, I believe actually they were 300 feet underwater, and with their flashlights and their propelling machines and lots of extra supplies laid out along the way, they swam together in the underground caves for 21 hours, eventually coming out of the water at a sinkhole seven miles away from the one where they started. And by doing this, they proved that the two are connected under the ground, which is an important piece of research about the ecosystem in the area. So in our scripture story today, Peter shares about a similar kind of a journey and finding out that the Holy Spirit, like water under the ground in Florida, is always present but can make itself known in unexpected places. So to get at what makes today's story so special, let's start with a basic reminder, which is that Jesus and Peter and all the other disciples were Jews. And not necessarily Jews in the way that we think of them now, Uh, with ancestors from different countries in Europe or in the Middle East. But Jews in the sense of being Judeans from the country of Judah, which is to say a people living in the place that they had lived for centuries, with a common culture, common heritage, and identity and family. And identity as a family. Ethnicity is basically the idea I'm getting at. It's closer, to, it's closer than being part of the same race, since race is an idea that was invented maybe 400 years ago, to lump a whole bunch of ethnicities into four or five different groups. It's also different from nationality, since it's possible to be a part of one nation and have a separate ethnic identity within that nation. So let's imagine that you take ethnicity as a little circle, and then you lay on top of that uh, another circle that's nationality, and then you lay another one on top of that that is um, religion, and pretty soon, um, and then you have this circle where, for the most part, everybody in the group has the same culture, language, nationality, and religion. And with enough rings on top of one another, uh, you start to get a silo, right? You get walls that circle some people in and circle other people out. And that's what we had for most people uh, in the world in those days. There was the Roman Empire, but it ruled over people's ethnicities and not nation states. So religion wasn't a personal choice in those days in the way that we might think of it more today. It was something that was mostly set for you as part of the identity you inherit when you were born. 
So part of so if part of what you're born into is which God or gods you worship, kind of like what your native language is or who your family is, which is how things were for Jesus and Peter and all the other disciples, then it wouldn't really make sense to even try to welcome or invite new people from other groups to become part of your religion. And so the disciples were thinking of Jesus' movement and his call to live in a new way and the amazing miracle of his death and resurrection as being part of a move to reform and renew and just do better with that silo, with their own people's beliefs and ways of worshiping God and being true to God's covenant. But then Peter had this vision and this incredible experience that he relates in our scripture reading today. He's praying, and God invites him to go on a dive down deep into the water. And he and his companions do dive down deep and swim under the ground. And when they come up to the surface, Cornelius is there asking to be invited into the water, to be baptized into the body of Christ. And Peter realizes that while he might have come to the surface in a different place, that the water is connected underground. The Holy Spirit has shown up in a new place among a new people. And so, following the leading of the Spirit, he makes Cornelius and his family welcome. He eats with them, he baptizes them, and he includes them. All things that, under the old way of doing things, ring on ring on ring into a silo, would have been an affront to the Jews' covenant with God. I'm doing it backwards today. All right. After all this... Word gets around about what happened and what Peter did, and that's the story we get today. The disciples, the other Judeans, who were heirs of Jewish history and family lore and traditions, the ones who are making sure that the walls of the silo are kept free from rust and holes, don't think very highly of Peter's journey to the Gentiles. It's an important part of honoring God, after all, to mark the boundaries. So Peter tells a story, his vision of a whole collection of non-kosher animals, the command to eat them, and then the invitation immediately after it to meet with Cornelius. And then finally, the signs of the Holy Spirit in Cornelius and the people there. The holes are connected, Peter says, under the water, under the earth, the water is flowing. And the miracle of this story is that the men and women who had been living in the silo their whole lives heard Peter's story and believed it and knew what it meant, that God was going out beyond them into the wide world beyond. The God who had worked through and with the people of Israel for so many years was about to make a leap. The fire that had been kept in the hearth and the fire pit was about to jump to the surrounding forest. God's welcome was wider than they had known it to be. And they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. In a different translation. So what does this mean for us? Well, first, Cornelius' good news is our good news. In church, the big things that usually get an emphasis are things like Jesus' birth, his teachings, his death and resurrection, and in a few weeks, the gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. But none of that would mean much to most of us without this encounter Peter has with the Spirit in Cornelius. If God hadn't been about the business of saving the whole world, most of us would still be outside the silo, muddling about beyond the reach of the repentance that leads to life. So this story is good news to the Gentiles, ourselves included. God started with Israel, and then God's welcome through the Jewish people was extended beyond them to the whole world. It's the ark of salvation bridging over all of us. Second, this is an instant inspiration to be constantly paying attention to our own tendency to silo up and to think of God as liking to stay inside those same boundaries that we like. We might not be dealing with the same kind of longevity and history and ethnicity that first century Judeans did, but on the other hand, marketing professionals are constantly at work trying to build profiles of people's whether we buy, based on whether we buy a Mac or a PC, whether we eat at McDonald's or Burger King, whether we like arugula or iceberg. And it's easy to wind up with friends who are the same age, same life stage, same political outlook, same holy book. Not that this is bad, necessarily, but if we start to decide that our group is the only one with access to God, then it can become a problem. 
The spirit, after all, is under our feet, and it can break through to the surface wherever it likes, just like those crazy sinkholes. Billy Graham tells a story about being in a Buddhist monastery in China and noticing a particular monk deep in meditation. And Graham feels a call by the Holy Spirit to go and speak to this man and had this I had kind of the classic conversion conversation with him. He tells him about Jesus, about his death and resurrection. And the monk is listening to the translator and taking it all in with wide eyes. And at the end of the spiel, Billy Graham asked the monk, Are you ready to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And the monk says, Accept him. I don't need to do that. Who you are describing with has been with me for so long that I didn't know these things about him and I didn't know his name. He was already with me. Thank you for telling me his name. It may be that the Holy Spirit is still showing up in places we never expected and that if we dive down deep into our own well, if we dive down deep into our own tradition, we may find that we are connected under the ground. Thanks be to God. Amen.